Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. Today I'm going to be repotting my large American elm. Here is a look at my American elm. This was dug up from the front garden. It just grew in the garden all by itself. And I've been working on it over the years. So the last time it was repotted was in 2019, where I gave it a root pruning and potted it into a tub. And then I needed that tub for another tree, my acacias, so I slip potted it into a slightly larger tub, and that's where it's been for the last couple of years. So today it's going to be a big repot. Should be exciting looking at the root system once again. I really like this American elm. I'm always cautious with this tree. There is Dutch elm disease, which can wipe them out at any time. I originally dug up three from the front garden. I gave one to Connor. One just died one spring. It never leafed out. So this is my only remaining American elm. So I, uh, I like this tree, but I'm always cautious that I know it could die any time from Dutch elm disease. So I just keep, keep developing it and if it makes it into a mature old tree, well, that'll be fantastic. If suddenly it just dies, well, there's nothing I can do about it. I overwintered the tree in the poly house and I'm going to do the initial getting it out of the pot outside here. It's quite a large tree and there's a lot of soil in there. So I will work on bare rooting the tree, wash the roots, and then we'll go back into the greenhouse for the root pruning. I'm going to start the work by getting the tree out of the pot. So there it goes. Lots of roots. And I'll begin combing out the soil. All right, here I go. So my goal is to bare root the tree, have a look at the roots and do any corrective work to the root system I can and get it repotted. And I, I'm going to look around to see if I have like a, a nicer pot than that black tub to plant the tree in, but I'll have to see what I have. I'm encountering quite a few roots that are circling around the pot and it's really hard to comb the roots out when there's like circling roots around the pot. So I'm just going to snip those because I won't be using them this far out anyway. It'll make my root combing much easier. Here is a better look at the roots that are circling around. So I can't comb those out. They're just, there's some thick ones in there. So I'm going to have to cut away the outer layer of roots that have circled around the pot. They're just so thick. I can't comb them out. They're just all intertwined. So I will cut the profile off the root base and go from there. Very deep. I think because I slip potted it into a slightly larger pot that it had a ring of roots and then it grew another ring of roots around the slightly larger pot. So I end up with this really thick bird's nest of roots going around because it's so deep it goes right in, you know, right into here, all these roots. Here is a cross section of that. You know, ring of roots really really thick I've never seen anything like that in my life so yeah that's from 2019 that's like five years of growth way too much so I'll have to repot this elm at least every two years I think I don't want this happening again so I think I'm going to have to get a saw or something I just like that goes all the way around a thick ring around the pot. I've got to cut all that away to get my roots combed out. Okay, I've got a saw out here. So I noticed 
that the drainage screens are way up in here. There's a whole mat of roots on the underside. So I'm going to start by kind of cutting the bottom off. Or trying to. It's a good way to dull a saw, that's for sure. Part of that. Now I'll come in here. Rotate it around. Lord. There's a drainage screen way up here. Oh. Well, I think the next thing is to do a bit of perimeter sawing. Try and get rid of this ring of roots. You see it's still wrapping around in there. There's a drainage screen right there. I will keep sawing away here. Didn't go deep enough there. Look at those roots. Unbelievable.
<laughs> Truly unbelievable, this. But I'm getting there. Getting that ring of roots removed from the outer profile. A little more work here. And then I need to get the mat on the bottom cut away. The saw was sent to me by Scott Winard from Let's Do Bonsai in the UK. So, I'm putting it to work, but I'm also dulling it, I'm sure. Okay, well, I think, I think I've got most of the circling roots cut away. I think I'll clean up and try combing them out again. Now that I've got all those roots that circled around the pot, taken away, sawed off, I hope I can comb out the root system now. So far, it's going a lot easier. I'm able to run the end of the root rake through the roots, kind of untangling them. Yeah, that's the first time I've ever had to do that, where I've had to, you know, saw off that many roots. I didn't expect to have to do that today, but I guess these elm roots grew like crazy. So I'm just kind of teasing out the roots, untangling them first, and then I'll switch to the root rake and start combing out the soil. And I may go to my tub of water for doing that. It might help having it in water to wash out the root system. And this is very gentle on the roots. It's very rounded. It's smooth. It just flows kind of around the roots. I prefer the metal chopsticks. I think they glide over the roots easier without damaging them. I think the wooden ones are a bit rough and they can kind of grip the roots and tend to tear them more. But, I mean, both work. It's just whatever you have available. Okay, so I've loosened it up with the end of the root rake. I think I will switch to the tub of water now and start washing out the soil from the roots and untangling them. Okay, into the tub of water it goes. raspberry canes hitting the tree there and I'll start to get the soil out from the roots I think it'll take a while kind of separating all the roots and washing them I have finally got the roots to where I want them to begin the root pruning there's still some soil in there but I've got to do some root pruning to get the remainder out but yeah there's still lots of roots after cutting off those giant rings of roots and the ones on the bottom. I'm going to start the root pruning now. I have no idea where this root comes or goes from. I'm just going to snip it off. Very strange looking root. There's one sticking up here I can prune away. Yeah, so anything that I can kind of cut away to make the combing a little easier, I will do. So one thing, I'm a little, you can see my root flare, it comes down, curves down, and it kind of flattens out. I'd like that slope to continue down. So I'll be removing some of these roots that are sticking up here. Like 
this one. It's just too horizontal, like that one. It won't flow down into the soil. It'll grow across the surface of the pot and create problems into the future. There's a root in here that's going a funny direction. I'm going to get rid of that. And there's still quite a bit of soil in here that I've still got to remove, but I don't know where this root goes here. There. There's a couple of roots. You can see they're sticking up out of the soil here. So I'll have to remove those. So. Just rough cut them off first. There's one gone. There's the other one gone, and then I'll have to clean this this stub up here. So I will come in with the knob cutters and just clean that back so it's not sticking out of the soil. And these wounds will heal. They'll kind of callous over and look very natural in the future. I think that's good. There's another root here that's crossing. Hair sticking up here. Now, I've still got this one. That one's sticking up out of the soil, too. That's got to come off. This one's quite horizontal, too. I can't do too much about that, but I can take any roots growing on the top of that root off to try and transition it into the soil. So maybe take this part off. That helps. There's some sticking up here I can take off. So that's kind of got a lot of my major surface root de defects, like sticking out too far, cleaned up. But I have a long way to go on this root system. And I will have to rewash it. I'm going to do some combing, try and remove as much soil as I can. I'm going to go underneath the root base now. There's a lot of roots here that are going strange directions that I can prune back. And they're getting quite thick on the bottom. So I want to shorten all these roots on the bottom. Because someday I'd like to put this in a fairly shallow pot if possible. Maybe even today, I don't know. Depends if I have a pot for it. And I'll trim back some of these longer roots here that are near the edges. This will allow me to clean the root base out a bit more once I get all these roots pruned away. Yeah, there's still a lot of soil in here. So I'm going to go back to my tub and I'll continue washing out the soil from the roots, hopefully getting it bare rooted this time. I have rewashed the root base. And Combing away soil and trimming up these bottom roots. It's you know pretty well wood on the bottom now Okay, I've wet down the roots to keep them moist while I'm working away So again, I want flow down into the soil This root is a little high here I'm just seeing if there's something below it That would be better. There's lots of roots there. Yeah, so I'm going to prune this one away. So 
Well, that's gone. There's some sticking up here. I'll get rid of those. I'll turn this one back better. This one's sticking up a little high. So is that one and this one, that one, I think that one might be okay. This one kind of hit the edge of the pot and it started to curl, so I'll put it back shorter actually. I'm going to go quite short because you know you want subdividing in your roots. This one's sticking up. There are some good roots in here. So let me just see where the front of the tree is. It's about here. So this is the front of my root base. This one's sticking up too high. So where are these ones? And I think this one too doesn't really flow into the soil very well. Got to see what's going on here. There was still some soil in there. Yeah, so this this root kind of you can see it comes up up from somewhere down below. So I'm going to prune it off. It's too bad, but you know I can't have roots coming up and around. They just don't flow nice. To get a beautiful root base, it's all about flowing roots and branches. You know, it's all the beauty of nature. It's a flowing. Okay, there's a crossing root in here that has to come out. I don't know where it comes from. Okay, it comes from here. Take that off. So that one I pruned off, it's, it's a good root. I just need to get the angle right so it flows into the soil once it starts growing again. There is one here that you can see it's crossing all these other roots. So I'll take that out. This one, it's getting too long. I've got subdivisions up here, so I'm going to prune it back to here. There's one sticking up here I can remove. Now this root's a little strange here. It has a like an upward bulge to it. And I've got to find out where it comes from. So it comes from underneath here somewhere. It's not the worst looking root in the world. I can tuck it down a bit. I think it'll be fine. There's a few crossing ones here I can prune back. This one I can prune back. This one's sticking up. Okay, so there's one here growing 90 degrees to the root. It doesn't flow, so I'll take that out. And, and I think on this root, the radial direction is here. I've got a dividing at the tip, which is nice, but then I have another root underneath. 
and it's quite parallel I could prune that whole upper section off and I think that would be a good call it's just too horizontal this root it doesn't go down into the soil so I will do that I've got a good root underneath so I'll rough prune it off first like that and then I'll nibble away at this upper section reducing it back to wherever it started from that's really going to help this root flow into the soil and it's got some good subdividing so I think that was a good move taking the upper root off Yeah, so there. That's gone. Now this part of the root is getting very thick. I have some subdividing of the root back there. But it doesn't flow the greatest. Well, I think i got another root here, which, where does that come from? Somewhere under here. So that's not the greatest origin of that root. Yeah, I've got to keep this root, but I need to reduce it. So I'm going to snip it here. Like that. I'll take some of the vigor out of it some root crossing here I'm going to remove. Now I'm looking for obvious flaws in the root system. I mean it's it's quite heavy. There was a thick root here that I've cut away and there's nothing I can do about that. You do see that in nature too, but it's not a desirable feature of the tree. But, you know, unless you grow the trees from seeds, it's pretty hard to control the root system totally. There's a root in here that's going a funny angle. I've got to find where it starts from. Untangle these roots. So it starts comes off of this root, I believe. Somewhere. So at the start of it's pretty good. I'll just prune it back to there. Yeah. I don't like this root. I'm going to remove it, I believe. kind of goes a funny direction and I've got better roots around it. So I've been working away sorting out the roots and they're getting better. So next I'm going to do a profile prune. Kind of getting rid of some of these really long ones. Kind of pruning them back so they're a little more even. Okay. So I think my next step, I need to pick out a pot for this tree. I'm just wetting the root system down while I look for a pot and make sure they're staying nice and wet. Here is a possible pot. This is a pot that Sophie made and she just gave it to me. Um, you can see there's not a lot of room for root growth. I mean, it's okay, it would do, but this tree's not really in the refinement stage. You know, I'm still developing this upper branch structure and thickening up these upper branches. So I think I would want something just a little bit bigger. The next pot I'm looking at is one of Lewis's cement pots. 
And I think it's a more appropriate size. However, widthwise, you can see it's a bit of a tight fit. I would have to do a little root pruning to fit the tree in the pot. I mean, it'll, it'll fit, but... Uh, it looks pretty good with the tree, that cement pot. The only other large pot I have is that big landscape mica pot. And I don't really want to use that for the elm tree. I'd rather save that for a forest. So I think it'll be the cement pot it goes in. I'm going to prune up the roots some more to fit it properly in the cement pot. This will be its new home for two years only. I'm not going to let the root pruning go any longer than that. I don't want to repeat that circling around the pot thing ever again if I can. All right, to fit this tree in the pot, you know, I'll have to do a little root pruning at the front here. Just shortening all these roots, which is no problem. They're just fine roots. They'll grow back very quickly. And I'll have to take some off the back of the tree too. Um, also, you know, some of these roots. Turn those ones back. Okay, let's see how this fits in now. A little tight still. <laughs> oh my goodness. This pot looks so big until you put this tree in it. So more pruning at the front here. These elms, I mean, the roots can take the hard pruning. It's no problem. And on bonsai, you want the roots to spread left and right more than front to back. Because that's where you see the root flare going. Now, let me step back and just have a look, make sure I've got the exact front of the tree. Okay, before I go too crazy pruning the roots, I think the front will be right there. Yeah. Okay. So just a little more root pruning, not too much more. And I will be ready to plant the tree. Okay, I think that is good. I think that's going to sit quite nicely in the pot. All right. I think I'm ready to plant the tree. I, I don't think I can do much more root pruning. I've got, you know, all the worst parts sorted out. It's flat in the bottom. I could maybe prune this one root off a bit more here. Maybe just flatten it out a bit more, but I don't think I need to do much more root pruning than that. I think all is good. Yeah. Okay, I'll get the pot ready, drain your screens in it, base layer of soil, and then we'll come back, position the tree. So, bring this forward a bit more. Yeah, it's a tough thing. Uh, it's a very, very symmetrical tree. There is like a heavier branch here, so maybe shifting it this way just off center a bit would be good. Yeah, that's not too bad there. Still looks pretty darn symmetrical, but I think that's okay. The, the trunk is off center in the pot. It's just, you know, not off center so much that it's noticeable. It's, yeah, I, I think that's pretty good. I also have to make sure my trunk is straight and it does look pretty good in the side view. Yeah, so I think all is well. I'm going to fill it in with soil now. I have finished repotting my American elm. So I worked the soil into the root system. I topped the soil level up. All is looking good. And now it's time to water the tree. All right, here I go with the water. I think it'll take a lot of water. This pot holds a lot of soil. It's funny, the tree doesn't look so big in this pot. You know, this is one of my largest trees and when it's in the bonsai pot, it doesn't look all that big actually. 
So I think, you know, some of those trees you see at the shows, they must be enormous. I just can't imagine handling them and repotting them all the time. I think I prefer <laughs> this to be my largest tree or one of my largest trees. I don't think I'd want anything bigger. Now, oh, is it starting to come out the drainage holes? It's just starting now. So I'll let this sit a while and then, you know, let the soil soak in this water and then I'll give it another good thorough watering in about five minutes. Here is a final look at the American Elm in the natural American Elm style. I think it's looking good. This tree gets better and better every year and hopefully it'll live to a grand old age. A lot of these branches in the canopy are a little whippy, but I'm waiting, you know, all this growth will thicken them up and then they'll get pruned back eventually a little more compact. But I like the direction of the branches. It kind of looks very natural. It had inverse taper at the base of the trunk when I dug it up and that is improving all the time. Yeah, I would say it's pretty well disappeared. The only reason it looks a little thick up top is there's some pruning scars that thicken the upper part. But yeah, it's getting better and better, the taper of the trunk. And I expect that to continue too. So my next task, I've got to get this out of the greenhouse and then back into the poly house. I don't have room to keep it in the greenhouse here. So I'll have to open my doors wide on the greenhouse and carefully put it out. I will put some stones on the surface of the soil here just to hold the tree in place until the roots take hold in the pot, which from the looks of things won't take very long, maybe a month. I've got the elm in the poly house here. It is so strange seeing it in a bonsai pot. It makes the tree look so much smaller. It's yeah, it doesn't look like a big tree at all anymore, really. It's sort of a medium sized tree, I guess. I've got two stones on the surface of the soil. It really locks the tree in. It feels very, very stable in the pot. It doesn't wiggle at all. So that is it. The work on the American Elm is done for today. It's repotted into its, its first bonsai pot and looking good. Today I took off, I think the most amount of roots I've ever taken off a tree before my American Elm here. It'll be interesting to see how the growth of the tree is affected this summer. If it struggles this summer or if it just grows normally, I don't know. I took a lot of root mass off of it. I would say 80% maybe, well, maybe not that much, 75% let's say. So time will tell. We'll see how it grows this summer. That is all for today. I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for joining me in the Bonsai Zone. <laughs>